Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 60 of the Cloud Computing Training Show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have Mark Thiel on our show as our special guest. Mark's successful career in IT spans 30 years and he's focused on both operating roles and on driving IT innovation efficiency and cloud adoption across enterprises of all sizes. Prior to joining Ericsson, Mark was the CIO and Chief Strategy Officer at Appsera, which was actually acquired by Ericsson. Mark is also the president and founder of Data Center Pulse, an organization created to promote best practices in the data center industry. Mark speaks globally at leading industry events on topics like cloud adoption, data center, IT organization, edge computing, and much more. Hi, Mark. It's great to have you Hi. on the training show this week. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Brad and David. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, sir, and thank you so much for your time on this Sunday. We know uh, it should be a day of rest, but we really appreciate um, you being a part of this. Uh, we've recorded two great shows already, uh, the Australia show and the C-Suite show. So uh, viewers or listeners, if you're watching this, make sure you do skip back to those shows and don't miss out because we've covered, some, uh, we've covered edge computing and 5G and it's been fascinating. So uh, yeah, check that out. And uh, hi to you, Dave, as well. Thanks for being part of the training show. See you sitting there very, very patiently. Yeah, it's great to be on the show, and we got a great topic because I want to figure out how the hell we train people on edge computing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, a warm welcome to both of you. And in this week's show, we're talking about the Telecommunications Industry Association has started up a new standards task group that aims to develop industry best practices for edge data centers, which include requirements and guidelines for design and installation of smaller, more distributed edge computing locations that will support 5G. So an opening question then for you, Dave, is will edge computing have the common best practices? Lord, I hope so, um, because I'm struggling just trying to find people that are, uh, you know, really uh, really uh, fluent in what edge computing is, because I, I get uh, definitions that are all over the place, and and people have a tendency to think that it's replacing cloud computing, that it's, uh, you know, uh, it's something where every all the compute engine needs to move, we're not going to carry phones around anymore, um, just this odd stuff that's going on, and the reality is we don't have, and then I kind of trace that back, we don't have a lot of... Um, knowledge and training courses on edge computing, meaning Linda, who I uh, uh, record for, um, you know, they have a lot of cloud courses and things like that, not a ton on edge. And if it is, you know, it's very basic stuff that you can get in articles, even the one we're reading. So I'm not sure where it should come. Should it come from the standards organization? Should it come from, you know, you know, thought leaders like Mark in the space who can, you know, write articulately about edge computing and how it's done to be done? Or is this something that's going to be a, uh, you know, uh, are going to be a deficit in our ability to train people going forward. I really kind of look at it as a crisis. It's worse than cloud computing because I need to hire a bunch of people to understand edge computing, understand the standards, understand the architectures, understand how to layer it in. And I don't seem to be able to find them. And it's very hard to build them because there's not a lot of courses out there, not a lot of best practices that take it. Maybe this is something I should look at. Maybe it's not. Mark, help me out here. Yeah, no, I think... Um... Uh, the sad truth is, is that you're 100% right. I'm, I haven't looked at what um, TIA has put together relative to edge yet, but uh, when I think about what could happen at the edge, um, uh, the the potential deployment models range from the extreme of someone like a uh, an edge micro or vapor IO creating small data centers that other companies buy and deploy everywhere that they need them, where they happen to have space and power and network access um, to something like outpost or um, from AWS or uh, Azure stack from Microsoft. And if you think about those two platforms as examples, I brought them up specifically as examples because and uh, hopefully I'm, I doubt, I mean, I know people at both organizations and I know they're, they're way smarter than I am, but um, you have to assume that there is significant thought in the Azure stack, if not uh, from three years ago when it first was being introduced to now uh, and Outpost, which hasn't been introduced yet, but I'm sure being thought of already, of the notion of not just providing on-campus examples of AWS or Azure Stack, 
which is how they are advertising it. And some people call that edge. I don't call that edge. I just call that a replacement for what you would do if you were trying to do it yourself, only you're doing it with their gear. But the, they have the added benefit as the seller uh, or manager of that equipment of the fact that that is a full or at least a big portion of the full stack from the cloud provider. So it does almost everything that their cloud would already do. People could easily deploy against it. And in reality, they're likely to be, if they're designed the same way, they're likely to be multi-tenant. So if they're going to be multi-tenant and on-prem, on then uh, whether it's AWS or Azure or anybody else that falls into the same category, by default, they potentially could create an edge at just by leveraging some small portion of capacity at each one of the companies that they install at. You take 20 or 30,000 companies around the country or around the world for that matter that install Outpost, you don't need very many CPUs added to each one of those Outposts and network access that you could, you know, you could pay the local company for, you could partner on giving them bigger access through your buying power, any number of things, and now you've got Edge. The alternative is, of course, that operators could buy that equipment and turn it into Edge, um, or they could put it in their own storefronts. Microsoft has storefronts in malls. They have offices all over the country. Uh, um, uh, AWS has Whole Foods and their own facilities and warehouses that could get them. I mean, just between Whole Foods stores and warehouses, AWS could probably put outposts in enough places to get 60% of the population with 20 millisecond latency or better in North America. And so the, the, the opportunity there and how you define the approach to edge, I think um, is very dependent on your business model and what part of the market you're trying to address. And I find it really hard to believe that an organization like TIA could be in front of that. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're likely gonna be cleaning up mess after the fact. Um, but even even some of the I've been invited to look at a couple of technologies recently that involve being able to cool servers without any more moving equipment. No more fans, no more need for air conditioning around the servers while still keeping the CPUs at a at an ideal temperature um, in in inclement environments or, or difficult environments. What does that do to the standard? What, what, what data center are we building if the data center doesn't need to be a data center anymore? Right. So defining standards for this market, I think, is going to be incredible, incredibly difficult. I think what's likely more important from an overall market development standpoint, and then the money pays for fixing it after the fact, is, is providing for a common lower, lowering of the barrier to entry so that people can get access to the market more effectively um, uh, without uh, just three or four companies. Yeah, and I'd say my journey... You know, I decided over the Christmas break to go ahead and bid, build an edge system. So, uh, you know, I used a Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, localized it with some sensors, um, you know, gathered data off a of, off of, uh, vehicle, um, culled the data at the uh, at the edge-based device, in this case, a Raspberry Pi. It's about the size of a cigarette. I'm sure you've seen them. But they're cheap computers and cheap storage systems. And I was able to teach myself through making tons of mistakes. I locked the thing up. The sensors didn't work. Uh, you know, I had to deal with different latency issues and trying to figure out how to transmit things back to a cloud-based network in a, in a high latency, uh, you know, cellular network environment so remain efficient. Um, you learn that way. And, and, but I really can't ask everybody who wants to understand edge computing to do that. So in other words, a lot of people want to suffer through it and kind of go through the pain. I did the same in cloud computing, by the way. I just you know, immerse myself, you know, for a few months and, you know, got into the details of what it is um, and then help define things going forward. So what would be your advice to someone who, you know, is looking to capitalize on the movement to the edge, the number of jobs that are out there? And I typed in edge computing into um, indeed.com today and I saw a curve that went that way. Um, so lots of positions are, you know, open right now. There's not enough people to fill them very much like cloud computing. But we are getting good training programs, things is nothing for edge, in my opinion. And we do see some of these organizations out there are trying to define things ahead of time. And I don't think there are, I, I agree with you, they're not going to do a good job. I think it's the thought leaders in the business ultimately writing the books and the articles and the guidelines that are typically I mean, free of charge or almost free of charge. Uh, they're going to provide the capabilities to drive these stuff forward. And so, you know, is a, are we going to get better at this and doing the training? Is, is, uh, 
the trainer is going to start uh, um, training other trainers and how to do edge-based computing? Or is this the journey like me, just go out there and get beaten up until you understand what's going on? Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a little bit of both, David. I think um, we're going to have to do uh, individualized development. But I think the, the, the potential best way for companies, especially companies that don't have a ton of developers available, um, and I mean, you probably know this again as well as or better than anyone else in the in the business. But uh, we, those of us who are at the forefront of talking and and working in um, uh, what would be considered public cloud and have been for you know ten years or more, uh, think that it's all um, very obvious, and people will want to deploy and build uh, cloud native apps, and they'll be able to not only build them but run them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we all make, at least some of us that are worried about the edge, think about the fact that um, new coding paradigms, new developer tools that are, could be in five years could just as likely be in a marketing person's hands as they are in a typical Python developers today, um, developing just as interesting code and opportunity, um, mean that demand is likely to come from a lot of different places. And how, how you leverage your internal skills uh, versus external partners, when you try to pull this back a little bit, is I think what's going to be key for people that want to benefit from the edge. And so if I'm in a small company that doesn't have 100 developers, that maybe has five or six people that help me keep my, my Oracle or SAP environment running on a day-to-day -day basis, then the best opportunity is to have one or two developers that can help develop against one of the common standards available today, whether that's GCP or Azure Stack or um, AWS and work through their marketplace and attempt to find deployment opportunities there. Um, from a, from a, a, if I'm looking to develop privately, then uh, without being a pure engineer myself, I think that the, the single most important thing, David, I'd love to get your feedback on this uh, as well, it's, it's kind of always been my recommendation, not just around edge, but anything complex, AI, ML, um, uh, IoT, is find a narrow opportunity that uh, you can clearly define, clearly define a positive outcome from, um, and build around how to deploy and support what it is you think you need to benefit from that um, capability, instead of attempting to boil the ocean, right? A lot of people I talk to almost feel like they can't get started because they think, what's my overall edge strategy? Well, that's, that's like saying uh, I've got a business plan and instead of going for three years against my business plan, I'm going to do all my business plan on day one, right? You have to build to where you're trying to get to. Um, and edge, uh, to a point that David, you made earlier about the storage folks, um, the, the not being a fast follower, I think that's potentially crucial. But um, I think what that means is that you need to get out there early, get out there with something simple and straightforward, get some wins, start to get a better idea about how your organization can support what it is you're building um, or whether or not you need more partners and then add on to that. But the notion that um, you know we could create a, a simple framework where, okay, I've applied this framework to the company and now every implementation of something approaching edge will apply to that framework before I ever have a business model, um, I think is um, unlikely. I, I, just, I just don't see that as being, I mean, I think that is just a, a fancy way of saying analysis paralysis, basically. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, ultimately we've got to kind of bring this in for a landing and the ability to kind of have uh, some thought leadership around edge computing, which I don't think exists today, uh, and the, the degree that exists for cloud computing and big data analytics and even cognitive computing and you know all the other things that have been around for a long time, the ability to kind of put together some architectural reference models and some technology reference models, they don't have to be correct, but they really kind of operate as a foundation, you know, for us to understand where this technology is going, how it's done, you know, something is needed to be done. It, it's it's been um, you know, on my to-do short list, but you know, you never get around to it because every I got to you know focus on cloud computing and IoT and you know big data analytics and cognitive computing and just kind of one aspect of things I do during the day. But now that we're getting professionals in the business, and maybe I'm talking to you, Mark. Um, you know, shouldn't we get together and have a consortium, big brains that kind of define 
what this stuff is and how to put a training framework around it. And, you know, even, um, you know, getting some training involved and, you know, doing some videos and things like that so people understand this technology. The biggest part of my day, the most frustrating part of my day is correcting assumptions people are making around edge computing and get this more than anything else that are incorrect and typically going to be misleading and are going to get them to an area where it's going to be disastrous. Um, so I can't really combat that unto myself, but I think this is a matter of, uh, you know, the people who are in the know, you know, to go out and teach people who are not in the know, or am I being a little naive? No, I think you're right on. I mean, uh, and, and David, you and I had a conversation about this a few months ago, but the organization that I help out uh, in some of my spare time, IDCA and their framework, um, uh, you know, using that kind of model, well, a relatively complex and, and, um, and deep technical framework for owning IT, I think applying something like that against a strategy for um, building edge is potentially critical. So if, if someone's interested at all in what I'm about, what I'm saying, just go take a look at the infinity paradigm at idc-a.org uh, and I'll get off that little um, hobby horse. But um, I, I think I agree with you um, in the sense that there, it's, it's funny, you know, and, and David, you and I were both involved in a lot of those discussions early on around public cloud. I, as much as those of us who already think we know the answers think that the debate about what is or what isn't something in the technology space is tiresome. The fact is, as many of us keep hearing in the news lately, words do matter, definitions do matter. And how companies get started on uh, uh, an objective that in my mind is not an independent technology objective so much as it's potentially an outcropping of a larger activity like business transformation or digital transformation, uh, or uh, uh, even if they're not calling um, themselves uh, a, a business in transformation to a digital platform, then uh, it's, it's for, for the most part, it's an opportunity to uh, focus on the company's plans to create better customer intimacy and, and um, customer engagement uh, and, and customer satisfaction. And so how that ties to um, the rest of the company's activities, uh, I think is, is crucial. Um, and again, starting small and building from some success or even building from failure, depending, and not thinking that this is something, I think, and, and maybe David, maybe, uh, you know, we're probably running out of time. Maybe you could end with, with some comment on this, but not thinking that this is something that a company should assume they have to solve on their own, that this is potentially an opportunity even to look at a market and say, should I maybe even embrace some of my co-opetition in order to get something more valuable to a larger number of customers ready more quickly at a lower cost to entry? Yeah, I think that's absolutely the way it needs to go. I mean, I always solve things with writing books about it uh, and then putting it out there for peer review so people could, you know, comment on it and I got things right and got things wrong and, and then adjusted things as, you know, methodologies change and approaches change. And, and, you know, often got grief about it because I was a CTO of a, in, you know, of a company that did the same technology. In essence, people thought they were giving away the secrets when the reality is we're building the market. Um, right. So we're turning the market to serve market from a billion dollars to $20 billion because we're teaching people about the value of any kind of a, any kind of a technology trend, cloud computing, IoT, edge-based computing, things like that. So I think over this next year, and I think the theme of 2019 would be to get the big thinkers together and start thinking about this and how we can actually, you know, get the information out there. I'm doing an edge-based project now and I'm toying with the idea of, you know, having a film crew follow us and, you know, developing it, um, not just for the publicity that the firm gets, but also for the ability to kind of teach people as to what we're doing. Good and bad, and watch the mistakes and watch the successes and, you know, kind of open the kimono on what goes on. and and building these things specifically if we're working in new technology. And I think more of that needs to go on. I just think uh, my fingers are crossed that, you know, I'm not the only one out there doing this. You're not the only one out there doing this, that we're, you know, thinking proactively how to train people on this stuff. Yeah, what no, you, the, some, something you just said, sorry if I uh, cut you off. Um, something you just said uh, reminded me that both of us um, do write the way you describe is that we're not out there to say, that this is what our company needs to do uh, in hiding to own the market. 
but rather what's the best way for this market to develop. And if I think about the edge market, and, and you know, you and I have already shared some thoughts on this, um, and certainly in my recent blogs on uh, on LinkedIn, I've talked about this, is that the the real opportunity for the edge marketplace is when uh, a simple majority of players involved in enabling it are actually driving some standards and some. Um, capabilities that lower the barrier to entry for a broader group of customers more quickly. And I know we're sort of repeating some things we've said already, but I don't think you can overstate the, the what I believe will be the difference between a fractured market that is developed in, in fits and starts by Amazon partnering with one telco and Google partnering with another telco or, or Walmart trying to be the, the standard for retailers or something like that. How do we instead create, in effect, an on-ramp that allows more of us to be more successful more quickly with a standard that allows for David or Brad or myself to deploy an app, again, back to the original part of our conversation from the first podcast today, is deploy an app the way somebody would deploy it in iTunes. That I can deploy it through somebody's marketplace, regardless of whose marketplace it is, and I can be assured that if I want it to be, in front of 80% of the available population in every one of the major um, geos in three different continents that I can do that, right? That's the best future for Edge. Yeah, absolutely. Good to agree. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a great summary there, Mark. Really great summary. Thank you. And thanks for being part of the uh, training show this week. It's been, uh, it's been awesome. Oh, it's been great. Uh, uh, I really enjoy, Brad, us uh, talking in person for the first time. And David, as always, you know, and, and if you do decide to pull something together where um, I could be a bystander and just even watch. I'd love to participate. Okay, keep in mind. <laughs> Excellent. And Dave, I, I've just forgotten actually, we've not done your top three tips. So then if you want to squeeze those into the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, in the next 10 seconds. Uh, don't let others uh, tell you how to do edge computing. That okay, that was, that was great, Dave. Thanks, that'll be enough. Um, right, so... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Let's, let's roll that from the top. No, so just my humor. No worries. Uh, you're you're really funny, man. Um, don't don't let others tell you about it. How uh, to do edge computing? I find that most people out there don't know what they're doing. Uh, not to throw um, you know water on the fire, but there's more in, misinformation out there than good information. So be careful initially. Uh, define your training early in terms of how you're going to do edge. In many instances, it needs to be home built. So you're going to have to create your training if you're going to build an edge team. And keep the business objectives in mind. Are you building a consulting firm? Are you building products? Are you building, you know, building things out? We need to know what we're doing with this. We can't necessarily go off in a general edge direction. It's going to have specific things that we need to focus on. Great top tips there, Dave. Thank you so much. And Mark, thanks again for being part of the show. Uh, you've been a star for all three of these podcasts and video casts. I really appreciate uh, your time on this Sunday. So thank you again, sir. Oh, no, thank you, guys, uh, to both of you. I appreciate it. It was uh, very entertaining. Thanks very much. And Dave, again, thank you so much for your patience and uh, you know being a part of the free shows again this week. Thanks so much. It's always a pleasure. Good having Mark on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, couldn't thanks, agree more. Dude. Uh, look, and thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. And like I said, if you haven't caught the Australia show or the C-Suite show, there'll be links for those as well. So make sure you subscribe and like uh, the channel on the videos. Uh, it's really important for us and our little cloud computing uh, community that we've got going on online with uh, Twitter and, and YouTube and all that sort of stuff. In fact, you can get Mark on Twitter, uh, which is mthiel10, uh, which is cool. There'll be a link below in the description. And David is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm Nelson underscore Hilliard. So check those out. We're on all the social media, so come and connect with us which would be cool uh, and remember we're on itunes and stitcher for the podcast so again you don't have to watch us you can just listen to us uh, but we hope you've enjoyed watching this week's shows with mark thiel as our special guest he's been awesome and we've covered some great topics so until next week thanks for watching